that's going to join us. Matt is a serial entrepreneur. He's with a company right now called IL411. Um, they're a successful company, and they've been working with a lot of retailers. Uh, if you are, the way that what they do um, and the potential of what they do is best explained to me, that as a guy, I have a pair of khakis that I will wear until the moment that they are no longer fit for public, and then I want to get exactly the same color, exactly the same size, and exactly the same style. And I want to get them with as little time as possible in the mall. They work with people to say, we're that kind of person. You might want to be browsing, you might want to look around all over and find something, and that's a wonderful thing. They can also help you find the shortest path to the object that you want. Um, but that's not the only thing that you do, and IL411 um, really does form some interesting partnerships around the value of knowing where things are in space and why that matters to us in this day and age. So Matt is going to talk about it, and we'll have a few more minutes for questions afterwards. But are you ready? I'm ready. Now are these automated? So yes, okay, totally wrong. All right, so I'll start. Just answer that after you introduce yourself. So. Okay, um, I'm the co-founder of IL411. We started in 2008. And uh, the founder of the company always starts with the same question. So how many times have you been in a Home Depot and you can't find something? <laughs> right? So he was in a Lowe's in central Missouri on his lunch hour. He sold cabinetry into this Lowe's. So he was in there like two to three times a month. And he was looking for a surge protector on his lunch hour. And it took him 20 minutes. And he was angry. And that was the genesis of, for what is now IL-411. So he, he had this experience in the fall of 2007. We started the company in 2008. It has evolved. We've been doing it for five years. And I'll go into kind of where we're at as a company. But it's evolved into something I didn't even imagine when we started. So everyone knows that there's a major market shift in mobile. So if you think about the percentage of people with smartphones, it's at 58% in the US. Um, 76% in Japan, 67 in Korea. Smartphones are, are rapidly taking over the marketplace. When we started in 2008, smartphones were only 2% of the US market. That's how much it's changed. 84% of smartphone shoppers use their devices to get information while in a store. That's a huge statistic. That comes directly from Google. Um, so, so shopping behavior and using technology inside retail is changing rapidly. Let's see, I changed the next slide, but that's okay. Um, so here's another interesting stat. One in three shoppers use smartphones to find information instead of asking a store employee. I'm that person. I hate asking for help. So I would rather use my device, and literally, I was in a Best Buy. I'm pulling up Wikipedia. I'm doing um, Yelp searches on information. I don't want to ask for help. I'll find it myself, right? That's technology. So the convenience and savings are leading drivers in mobile use. And what's the largest one? Saves me time. That's more valuable than money. But saves me money is right behind it. And then, you know, just make my life easier. That's where the world we live in today. I should have timed these. Anyway, here's the ratio of people using iPhones and iPads now. So iPads are to the left. iPhones are to the right. Navigation is number one. How do I get from point A to point B? That's in the outside world, but it's also in the indoor world. How do I find things? So navigation is something we take for granted. 75% of US consumer spending occurs in the store. Everyone thinks e-commerce is taking over the world. It's still only 7% of total commerce that takes place. Shopping in the US is a three trillion annual revenue generator. E-commerce is only 226 billion of that. It's growing and it's growing fast, but it's still a small percentage. What's mobile influence on it? Right now, in store, it's going to go from 158 billion to 689 billion. E-commerce sales will go from 226 to 327, and mobile commerce is growing from 12 billion to 31 billion. So mobile is engaging people in multiple ways while they shop in the store on their way to the store, one day or a night before a trip, right? It's all about planning and how you use your smartphone when you're thinking about shopping. So what's the point of all these stats? Well, smartphones are changing the way we view the world and how we use that information. And for brands, there's a $20 billion opportunity right now that's shifting from traditional media, which is all declining, print, radio, television's stagnant, internet's kind of stagnant, 
Mobile is growing rapidly. It's, it is where the opportunity to put brand dollars to work and to engage people in ways like augmented reality that didn't even exist five or 10 years ago. It's huge. So what can you do as a brand, as a retailer? Well, here's all the stuff that's out there, including augmented reality, right? There's a lot of ways you can spend the money, but what we quickly realized is there's a foundation that has to be built. And so where do retailers start, right? Where, where should they start? And I apologize for any animation. But you gotta kind of figure out, I would like to do all these things, but they each cost you know, a lot of money. How do I start? Well, I'll just get to the next slide. You start by building the digital foundation, which is you have to organize and digitize your data. You have to move that data into the cloud, and it has to be siloed in such a way that it's consumer friendly. So retailers have been using data for 30, 40 years. They use what's called planogramming, shelf planning, shelf tagging, but it's all about just making sure that the associates know where to put the products. They haven't really thought about how do I take that data and make it usable for someone to find a product. And that's what we've done. We build a map of the store that's digital, and then we layer the products on top of the map, and we do pin drops, so we show you exactly where it's at and where the restrooms are or where an ATM is. So search on mobile is different than search on the web. It's about proximity to the product. I'm here, I need a pair of khakis, where can I find them quick and easy, right? And so some of our competitors, they'll do list, and literally you will sit there and scroll until you find that product. Google will do images and list. We literally just go, khakis are here, or in this case, soft drinks. We do a pin drop to where that item is that you want. Because again, visual world, that's all I really want to know. So we have our own app, which you can download, iPhone, Android. We're also embedded inside Walgreens app nationwide. We're inside eBay's Red Laser app right now. And then we're inside hy vs app, and we're going to be launching more this year. So there's a lot of technology that have come out of our company that's being implemented in other people's uh, applications. So we're getting ready to launch aisle 411 local. And this is really about discovering things near you. And I'm gonna give a demo um, as soon as the presentation's done. So it's about, you know, I need coffee, right? It's all browser-based. I need coffee, it automatically sees where I'm at, whether I'm at a desktop or on a mobile device. In this case, I was in Flagstaff, Arizona. And it'll show me the stores around me where I can find those things. Because I've never shopped in Flagstaff in my life. I just was visiting. So the travel market, this is huge, right? I forgot to pack shampoo. I need a toothbrush. So local mobile search works. Nine out of 10 users will take action as a result of search on mobile. 68% will visit the business. If you show them where they carry that product, they're on their way there, right? 38% will take action immediately and buy something. So local mobile search. Our goal right now, we're gonna launch this next month, is to turn every retail location in the world, we'll start with the US, into digital stores. We wanna optimize proximity product search. So I'm here, gather metrics around usage on brands and retailers, or for brands and retailers, and gather metrics on how people are using the technology. Now this is the end of the presentation, but I'm gonna give you a demo. So let me just unplug this. Thank you. So here's the point. The company was started with the idea of helping consumers just find stuff in stores. That's really what we start out to do. And when we started, um, smartphones are only 2% of the marketplace. So our alpha was an, it was an IVR. You called and talked to a computer and you would say, where is a screwdriver in a hardware store? And the computer would say, well, it's in aisle 21, right? And then you would walk over there and you'd see the signage and you could figure it out for yourself. Well, then we, we realized with smartphones, we could actually build a digital map. And um, with a digital map, you could do the pin drop. I could show you exactly within that store where a screwdriver is. Well, now we've taken it outside the store and we said, well, wait a second. You know, if I need a screwdriver, and I'm here in downtown, I don't even know, you know where's the closest anything to buy a screwdriver. Um, why don't we just take this to the browser so that it can ask me, where are you located, and see that I'm here downtown. And so now if I type a screwdriver in, and I have no idea how, what the results are gonna be, so 
It could come up bad. I'm give you something with vodka. <laughs> it may. So I didn't know that the Chinooks call an area right downtown carries screwdrivers. I would have never thought that, right? So I don't even have to go out to Lowe's or uh, you know anywhere. I can just go over there. And if we're working with the retailer, pull up the store map, and boom, that's where the screwdriver is inside the Chinooks downtown, right? So this is, this is the reality of the world we live in today. It's about taking data, right? And it's saying, look, I just need to reorganize your data so it's, it's usable from a consumer and then visualize it for them. You know, that's the help that we want to provide. So if I go back one step, kind of our thinking is, well, look, now that I know this is the closest store, and, Sh and Schnooks now knows I'm looking for a screwdriver, well, then if I sell four brands of screwdrivers, I can now sell them advertising or, you know, do a bidding war to get their brand of screwdriver to show up, right? So it's about messaging. No guarantee people are going to buy it, but at least they'll know that that screwdriver is available in the store. So it's taking the data that's out there, and it's just organizing it in such a way that now it's about proximity. So here's what we're thinking, is we'd like to take and make St. Louis the first proximity city in the world. Every retailer located in the metro area, we want to put their data in the cloud. We want to work with the retailers, we want to work with the brands. And then we want to tell the world, look, when I'm in St. Louis, if I need a screwdriver, all I got to do is use this technology and I can find it. I need a certain toy for a birthday, I need to find a, a card for my wife, right? I mean, it's any product that you could think of now have that database tied to proximity within a certain circumference so that you know the closest places where you can find these products. So we're in the midst of kind of bringing, bubbling that up. We don't know if it's going to happen. We're hoping St. Louis, the city of St. Louis, likes the concept. And, and that the region, the RCGA, they kind of buy into, oh, well, if this kind of sets us apart from the rest of the world. No one else has this. This is something unique to St. Louis. So that's one of the initiatives that we're, we're contemplating launching, which will be here, you know, based here, and just taking that data and making it a very rich experience. And then you tie it to what he's doing with augmented reality, because now I know all the products and what they're at. So now I hold up my iPad and use my camera, because I know that store has the products I'm looking for, and boom, you know, there's, there's a cartoon of the product or, you know, something. You can start delivering that rich content based upon that database. So this is the kind of cool stuff that's going on here. Um, and that's all I got. <laughs> Matt may not remember because we were, uh, we were at a party down in Dallas at South by Southwest and we were talking with the guys at Food Essentials. So Food Essentials is a, is a startup. They have a huge database of what's actually in food. So you know, people on labels, manufacturers sell the pork for the most part. Food Essentials actually goes out and if you're told that you're pre-diabetic and you need a certain glycemic index kind of food, um, it's very difficult to actually find that product. And, you know, if you search for that online, just do a Google search, it's hard to find. They actually have a database that will tell you here's all the kinds of things that you can eat. Well, we, we were kind of joking and saying, so what if you were to take that and overlay that with what they have to say, here's where I am, here's what my doctor has just diagnosed, where's the food that I can actually eat? Right. Um, Certain dietary needs, building a shopping list around certain dietary needs, that's exactly right. And then some, a person that was part of that conversation that does some things in public health would, would say, well, why don't we correlate it to the people that have dietary restrictions that we know about based on public health records? And let's not look at it food that says just who's got a store that offers fresh food, but let's like look at a store that says, you know, let's look at it to say who's actually offering the product makes the people in that neighborhood need to consume. So there's some really powerful things that happen when you, um, another person referred to what Matt's doing as, well, what they're doing is they're just realizing that a supermarket is just a physical instance of a database. So we, for years, thought that databases were really ways to represent reality. Now it's flipping around that your database of the physical environment that you're going for. So right, it's because it's about information. I mean, it's access to information. It's, I want it now. I want the information around what it is I want. And just show me where can I access that, right? I mean, to his point, could, it's as easy, easy as, you know, there's an app out there now for the closest clean public bathrooms. 
that I think Procter & Gamble did. One of the toilet, or Kimberly Clark, right? So you download the app and it shows you the cleanest public bathrooms closest to you. It's all about proximity, right? Eight, ATMs, I need, I need money. Great restrooms, the more they gift public restrooms with free toilet paper as a way to drive the ratings. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it is, it's proximity. And, and again, when we started the company, this, we always knew that it was about search, and we knew it was search on mobile, but we now know it's more about even more than search, it's about proximity, right? And so it's, I'm downtown St. Louis, I'm either visiting or I just don't come down here enough where anything's at, to know where anything's at. And so in this case, I needed a screwdriver. I never would have thought to think that Schnucks has one. That's, that's powerful, right? Because now I can go to Schnucks and say, look, for a penny a year per product in that location, I can move all that data in the cloud and make it searchable from any device, because this is browser. You don't even have to download an app. It's just open the browser, go to that website, enter your product. It already sees where you're at, and enter your product, and boom. Oh, man, that's amazing. I can get that. So, um, want to get your question? I'm going to call on you, put you on the spot, but um, Kara's with Maris, you guys do incentive and loyalty things. You know, do you ever hear about, do people talk about location as part of that? I mean, is, is it an important part of what people value? Or, I mean, from your perspective, I'm just curious. Yeah, I, um, honestly, I haven't heard location come up. I mean, we've been doing a lot of gamification and augmented reality for our, our clients. Um, location is something that I haven't heard come up yet, but I think that's probably something that we should be looking at. So and just so you know this, so the first robotics event that comes here every town, every year, we actually mapped the entire event last year for them. We didn't do it this year, but we did it last year, and then we're, we're going to call them and do it for them for free next year. And, and if you think about trade shows and event marketing, mapping that event and just being able to help people find booths, especially the giant shows that take place, it's huge. And that's another opportunity. Now, Cynthia, who's in the audience here, she contacted me literally, what, six weeks ago? And she goes, my partner and I have an idea about mapping libraries. What she didn't know was the Kirkwood Library had already contacted us, and they said, we want to do a project to map our library. And it's the same concept, right? It's, it's an indoor space. We just need a digital map that's dynamic, and it could be browser-based or native app-based. For the Kirkwood Library, they want a browser-based solution. So if I'm looking for a certain author or a certain type of book, now that's all available on the web. And so it has applications beyond retail. It's just that we've started in retail. We know that for the brands, and you know, um, that's going to be the big opportunity because people do, they shop them more than any other activity on earth, right? I mean, shopping is just part of our life. So that's kind of where we want to start, but we know this will expand to other areas as our company grows. I want, I want your books in my Amazon wish list. I want that to cross that next to what libraries are available in that. So, right. So I can be like, what's the near, you know, if I want to read that right now. Right. Can, and is it available? Is it Barnes & Noble? Is it the library next to me? Or is it not? Like, what's the fastest way to get that book? Right. Oh, I have a question. I noticed that um, you had both uh, screwdrivers were located, the screwdrivers were located in grocery stores. Stores. Well, and we do work with Home Depot. We don't work with Lowe's yet. Okay. But if you look, it was the closest stores around us. And I don't think there's a Home Depot within whatever that parameter that we and set. It's part of, like if there was a mom and pop hardware store downtown, yeah, which there is a mom and pop. Yeah, but I'm not working with them. I don't have their data. Uh, but your, your local thing is an effort to allow them to, to come right to go to go to a website. They can move all their data, so they can just take their inventory data and they can load that into the cloud through our website. And we, won't, we don't have to map the store form, but I know that your data is searchable now. And so it's a simple way for them to move their data into the cloud. And then if they want to spend a little more a month, we'll actually go in and map the store form and layer that data on top of the maps. Yeah, I was curious about that. Because yeah. I like that they Yeah, and our whole initiative is, is we want the mom and pops to have the same capabilities as Walmart and Target and the large ones. So you allow them to, to make the investment to get you going and get some critical mass, but now you want to layer in the locals. Right, the Walmart is the Death Star of companies. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's all self, they got to self manage. But we have browser based tools that we built for Hy-Vee, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. 
And it is actually a map of the store, and they can just drag and drop the categories around the store. It's in their best interest, their best interest to do it, because it's about customer service. Again, that stat, what's the most valuable thing to people? It's time is more valuable than money. And that, you can't do any better customer service than help people save time. We, well, so if you think about a typical, we'll just say schnooks. Schnooks will carry somewhere between 40 and 60,000 items in a store. And so we take those 60,000 items and we reduce that to about 1,500 locations. And then of those, lo you know, that's like a four foot section. And so tied to subcategory. And we had to figure this all out because none of this stuff existed when we started. And so by doing, once we kind of understood that, then the next challenge was the grammar. So. How do you get the grammar so it's more user friendly? So we had to do what we call grammar scrubbing and we did all that and then that kind of solved the problem and then to his point, how do you self-manage your store? So if I did have a new product, I can just take that product and drop it into this category. So, so, like, so you said, okay, so there's all of these, you know, there's all these SKUs and, and of those, there's 50 SKUs related to ketchup because we've got all the gourmet ketchups and everything. Right. So we're going to reduce that ketchup and if you know what, we're going to take it another level and we're just going to say condiments. Right. And you're, so, but then what happens if the store suddenly decides, you know what, we want the ketchup in the aisle of the pasta sauce because it's tomato based, but we want the mustard in another aisle. Right. Is there a way to then they, they can sub So she was, we were just talking about Schnooks has redone the store on the hill. They've redone all their stores actually. So now there's a bunch of people in St. Louis who knew where ketchup and mustard were and it's no longer where it should be. For things like that, that's what this is. Again, it's hard to find items, a store moving things, I'm out of town, right? Or new, think about new product launches. So I see something on TV and I want to find where it's at, right? Well, now I can go to my browser and type it in, and if that brand's working with us, I can show you the stores that carry that product, that new product that you've never seen before that you want now. Do you have a sense of what, what are the most frequent things people are looking for? Yeah, I mean, we, we record all the searches that take place, and God, I gotta think, I haven't looked at our search data lately. I mean, I would imagine, you know, so like, if I think about a story, and I'm like, so if I want a particular brand of something, I'm like, so is that an organic brand? Is that a group? I mean, like, right. is that going to be in that aisle, or is it going to be in the category aisle? You know, so there's, right. like, that would be like, well, well, six places it could be, I'm not going to go work out six places. So if you've never been in a Whole Foods, go into Whole Foods and you want product shock, I don't recognize any brands or any of the labels. I don't rec it does, none of it makes sense to me, though I know I want something within Whole Foods. And again, that's the kind of, you know, that's where this technology be, would be very beneficial. Because I'm in a store I've never shopped in before and I don't recognize any of the labeling, right? And then we, when we started the company, I set, you know, like all entrepreneurs, I set a very lofty goal. This was our mission statement. It was literally to find any product in any store, in any language, anywhere in the world. So if I'm in downtown Japan and I can't even read the packaging, let alone understand the language, with this app, if I could just pull it up and then see in English what it is, and then click translation so that I can see the packaging and know that I'm buying toothpaste instead of preparation H, right? Then that's where this this is where that's where this all goes, right? So the travel market ultimately becomes an even bigger opportunity, right? Because I, I can't read the language or understand it. So thanks a lot, Matt. No, glad to do it. We're very excited about augmented reality, but we've not done any research on it because we want, you know, we're going to hook up after this event, and you're going to go to the WHERE conference, I would imagine, out in California in October? Okay. You may want to think about the WHERE conference because we're going to be on a panel there. And so retailers are very excited about this technology and retailers that we're working with and we would love to bring it into them because it's all being sorted out. I don't think anyone really knows the consumer adoption rates yet. I think it's still very small. People like it because it's novel and unique, but I think that it's gonna require like a Walmart or a Walgreens or a Home Depot to kind of embrace it and then bring it to the public. 
and then you'll see, you know, real stats. But as, as a former teacher, I know that students don't have that uh, well, I think that, reading a map. Don't you think that brings us back to where Aaron started? You know, Aaron started off with you know, you the big picture. View, right. Make sense of what I'm looking at right now, but then the map gives us context and lets us see how it relates to other things, and that's a form of literacy. That that's a spatial literacy. That that be able that be able to make that translation. Maybe these applications will help develop that literacy, but I'm I'm seeing a gap right. where a lot of people are in the well, you know, I think, map. You know, I think that um, first of all, just you know, fantastic job in all the speakers and great questions and discussion. But I think that what we're seeing here is this thing about like wow, we're having this conversation about place and how we talk about it. Remember I said like this lab where you could go up, you know, the people that, you know, so all of these PhDs, very bright people, know more about Mars than anybody else. I need to be 50 feet up in the air and figure out where to take this over next. So there's this way that we can have discussions about location and find meaning in location and apply it in different ways. And I think that we're learning how to, to add this to our skill set. It's a new language, it's a new way of navigation that, um, you know, that, that is just going to be different. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just part of the toolkit that we have to have as humans. Right. Because it's about getting information fast. Okay. And the fastest way for information is you have list view or visual. And maps are powerful. I'm a, I actually have a map in my backseat of my car that I'm hanging in my office today. Because I love maps. Maps are from the outdoor world to what she does, right? Now, do you work with the US Census data at all? I was going to ask you. OK. Gathering that data and then being able to layer that information and look for trends is, is amazing. Now, imagine that indoors. So if I could see where people linger the longest inside retail and kind of start trending, like what's the most popular items there, and tie that to the point of sale system so that I can see what people are buying, or what impact displays are having on people's you know, immediate gratification, that's pretty powerful stuff. Right, because then you can show red zones. This is like the most popular area in the store. So Google does the same with Google flu trends, where when people search for what do I do about having these symptoms, and actually go after they can predict flu, where the flu is up and breaking out faster than the CDC can. Right. So imagine taking the product side of it, that you could actually then say, and who's buying deep congestion? So now we know who's actually searching for flu symptoms, but what they really have said. Right. Now, it's interesting because we're working with some large retailers and part of what we had to agree to with them is we cannot take a lot of the data we collect and just sell it out to like the CDC or the government without their permission. They're, you know, they're worried our people are looking for trends on people, what people are buying inside their stores, right? And that data has immense value for brands and product manufacturers, NSA. right? <laughs> and the NSA, right, that's exactly right. So I mean, I'm very excited about our 411, and I want everyone to be excited because this is, you know, this was start, thought up in a bread company in St. Louis, Missouri, um, and so we're part of kind of the the startup ecosystem. Dan knows very well. We have some big announcements that we're going to be launching. Um, we're taking it beyond retail just by coincidence, um, but I still want to talk to you about your idea because I'm curious. I mean, libraries and trade shows. I think. You know, those are all the ideas that where you can apply this in really unique ways with the right partners, right? And Merits, I think, would love this because there's all sorts of things. If you just put the creative hat on and you get the right people in the room, you know, and then again, tied to what he's doing, that there's really cool stuff. And, and it, again, collaboration. So I was just telling, I forget, I was always telling you, there's another startup here in town, and I was aware of them, but I never like took the time to understand what they did. And this. One of my investors goes, you've got to go meet these guys. So I went over there and looked at what they did. And it was like, if I take what I do and put it with what they do, this is like amazing, right? And that would only happen in St. Louis. That call it, well, I mean, it happens all over. But it's great to see that happening in St. Louis, right? It's being open to collaboration and being willing to work with other startups. So it's exciting. So, so um, we have to end because uh, there's another event that's going to be happening here in about 1500. Just if you minute, you're welcome to stick around if you want. I'm Jim McNally, co-founder of Square, and some other folks are here talking about movement to develop the uh, programming talent here in town.